Hey, welcome back. So we're continuing on from the previous video, and if you haven't seen that, make sure you go back and see it. What we have here is uh, some of our images that we found, um, and later on we'll talk about creating our own stuff, but we really just want to get the idea uh, about a, creating a 2D game across without having to go create our own assets for right now. So we've already imported our sprites, and we're ready to actually start working, except that when you import sprites inside of Unity, it has to be prepared for Unity. It, you can't just take a sprite and use it and think it's going to work on all platforms and, and that sort of stuff. Unity has to kind of conform the sprite uh, to the game engine. So that's what we're going to do right now. So that way we're able to use this inside of our 2D game. So go to the folders where you have all the sprites that you downloaded. If you go here, you see I created these folders, BG for background, items, players, and UI. I'm going to have to go through all of these and format the images I'm going to use. So for right now, I know for a fact I'm going to use this background and I'm going to use this tile, the tiles here. I'll probably use these objects, but I'm not really going to format those right now. I'm going to show you how to do this one, and then you can go ahead and do the other ones that you need. So first, I go to the folder that I my images are in. Then I'm going to select from there. I'm going to go over here to the inspections panel. Let me expand this. So in the inspect inspections panel, what you're going to see over here, I have this default texture type. What I'm going to want to do is select this and bring this down to sprite 2d ui and then i'm going to get these uh these menu items here these attributes here i can go ahead and leave that to single because this is a single image everything else here you can look over these but everything else here is uh it's already fine like even this right here where it says color rgb uh texture this is all fine and the only thing we want to make sure of is here where it says generate bitmaps. Because we're doing 2D, we don't really need bitmaps. There's no need for me to go into detail uh, in this unless we start doing some 3D. So once you have all this set, we go down here to the size. This says 20, uh, uh, 2048. And really, we can bring this down to 1024 uh, because we don't need that much detail. But because this is the background, I'll leave it at the high high detail. When I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and hit apply. And so what it does is it uh, applies all of this to this background image. Now you can see what happens once it's done. It automatically readjusts this background image so it actually looks like the image that's in here. The second thing you'll notice is that over here inside the folder, you'll have this little arrow key right next to the background which is an indicator that has, has done all the processing that it needs and technically now I can take this and drag it into my scene unlike before. So now what I want to do is go here to my tiles so I'm going to double click on my tiles folder and I want to do the same thing to all of these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on one and shift select the last one and these are all individual images. It's not one big sprite sheet, so I can keep this as single. And then I'm going to leave everything else the same. And actually, I'm going to change this file size here. I'm going to change the size, not file size. I'm going to change the size to 1024. And then I'm going to click Apply. And again, you can see here with the little arrows there, we know that that's set. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other uh, backgrounds. And well, I'm done with the backgrounds. So I'm going to go to these items. I don't have anything in the items. If you downloaded some items, make sure you go ahead and do that. But I do have these uh, UI elements here. So I'm going to take this UI element here. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to bring that to 2D UI, leave it as single, hit Apply. And I'm going to do that for this one right here. Now, the only difference between this one is this is not a UI element that is one image. This well, technically it is one image, but it's a special kind of image called a sprite sheet. So we got to do a little bit different on this one, so that way we're able to use the sprite sheet. And the interesting thing about a sprite sheet is, it is that it is, uh, let's say, like multiple images that represents individual objects. So, and it, and it represents the state of those objects. For instance, like a button can be pressed or it can be 
um, held down or can be released or can glow and all of those states would be in the spreadsheet for each one of those buttons or items so what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing here by adding that as 2D I'm just gonna change this to multiple instead of single I'm gonna keep this as tight here because everything's kinda of close together and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the sprite editor and it says as I'm able to uh, import the settings for this asset uh, do I still want to apply this and I'm gonna click apply once I do that the sprite editor opens up I can use my middle mouse button and control to drag in closer and what you'll see is all the different states of this button so you see here's where it's normal here's where it's the mouse is over and here's where it's disabled um, so as I I'm gonna move up here you'll see up here you have this button here where this is the normal button state this is when the mount when it's clicked and this is when the button is locked and you can see here what the artist did he put this up here so you can kind of see what it was and the, the the text is in there you can also see the consistency between these types of buttons where when you go down here and you have this Google button you have it where it's this overstate and it's disabled state So what I want to do is go over here to the sprite editor and then I'm going to go to the right here. I'm just making sure I'm in the sprite editor. I'm going to go over here to the right and I'm going to go to the slices and I'm going to leave everything else. So I'm going to leave it as automatic and then I'm going to hit up slice and then what you're going to see is Unity is going to go through all of these images and it's going to notice that each one of these is an image within itself and it's going to put these boxes around it so it's giving you this preview of what it's attempting to do once you have that done you can actually I'm not going to trim it that's when you have something that's uh, uh, extra long so then you have to trim these boxes but right now everything looks ex exactly right and I'm going to hit apply here and after you give it a second you'll see this image over here change and then another thing you'll notice uh, so I can go ahead and close this now I'm doing this so you can see how this is grayed out that's how you know that this is already done you can't click it again so I'm gonna close this and then when I click on this you'll see over here that the image down here has changed as well um, so when I click on that little arrow you'll see how it's separated all those little buttons there and basically I can drag that button inside of there as well as the image over here Uh, the second thing you'll notice is that down here the apply is grayed out so we're going to do the same thing with our other sprite sheet so I'm going to go here to the player I'm going to go here to PNG and you know I really don't um, I really don't like this called PNG um, night for being the night player that's good because I'm, I may have other players in here and I don't want them I don't want any confusion here so um, in this one I'm gonna select all of these images so remember the shift select then hold down control and then select these other ones So I have all of them selected. Now all I need to do is go here and change this to 2D UI. And it's not going to be multiple. And then I'm going to hit apply. All right. And then you see the little arrow on all of these. And now all of these are ready to go. For instance, if I wanted this uh, attack character here, I can literally just drag it out there onto my screen. Uh, and I'm able to use that. So those are ready. I'm going to hit delete. So I'm so this video might be going a little bit longer, but I do want to get us to have a background finally on this video that's going to represent our actual game. So we only have one background right now, and basically I could just drag it in here, but really I want to put it in there in a way that's going to represent the way my game is going to look. And I want to drag this in. Um, I want it to be at the origin of everything. So the way to do that is I'm just going to drag it inside of this... Uh, 
hierarchy here, and it'll automatically go to the origin of the world. So when I uh, select on this background, now technically what we have here is we're looking at this 3D background, or this 2D background in a 3D space, and we would expect that when we play our game that because it's a 2D game, we'd be able to see the fact that this right here will take up the whole screen. So even if I went to my 2D view, this is not the camera view. This is your view for your, just your, your application view. This is not the view of the game itself. So that's just giving you an idea of it, where how you can set up the, this, um, this navigation view to look like it's the game view, but it's not really the game view. What you want to do is look through this camera so you can see the actual view, and this is how it would actually look. And to be sure, you can hit play and go to this game view here. And then you'll see that even though we put this, this um, background at world center, it still is not managing to take up the entire screen. And the only reason for this is because we need to set up this background or the camera so that way it always takes up the screen. So the way I'm going to remedy this without actually worrying about any sort of true details of how each pixel uh, represent, is represented in the camera, we're just going to go ahead and click on the camera here. And then you'll see here that you have this... Um, projection right here is in perspective. That's not what we want. What we're going to want is orthographic. And then you'll see this change here. Once you have, uh, put this in orthographic, you're going to see this size parameter here. And we want to change this to something like 3. And actually, let's try a, a 2.5 because uh, our background is not 100% matching to the size of our display. So we're going to have to try to fiddle around with this a little bit. But it's going to be between 2 point something and 3. So let's try. See, I don't want any gaps here. So this is why I'm, I'm going in between these numbers. 2.7 probably should be good. 2.75. Let's try 2.79 or 8. 2.77 seems to be good for this image. So it all depends on the image that you have. But 2.7 is good for my image. You want to make sure that that's in the camera. Under this, we change the orthographic view or projection. And then we change the size here. So what does that mean? That means now when we drag things into... So right now I'm in the play mode, right? So here's, here's a really good lesson that you need to understand that we talked about before. I'm in play mode. Um... If I were to go out of play mode, I would lose all of my settings here that I have here. Okay, so let's say we did this, but yet we wanted to keep these settings when we get out of play mode. Uh, and if you remember in video, I believe it was in a video too, I showed you how while you're in play mode, if you're changing things around, when you get out of play mode, it's going to go right back to the original. Now, I'm going to show you how that works, but before I do that, I'm going to go to this camera settings. I'm going to right click on this little cog thing here and I'll put copy component and then I'm gonna hit stop and you'll see how everything went right back to the way it once was my field of view the perspective and everything like that now when it went back all I need to do is go here and I'm going to paste the component values and now you see all those values that I had there are pasted in here permanently uh, because I'm now no longer in play view now I'm just gonna go ahead and save my scene and if I um, go here to 2D, I can see my camera's in place, I can see all of this is in place, and if you look at the camera, the line, the, the view of the camera, this little white rectangle that you see, that's telling you what the camera is seeing in relation to the background. Uh, also, if you just click on the camera again, you know, you'd be able to see that. So I'm going to go to scene view, click on that camera, you can be able to see what the camera is looking at here. The second thing that means is if I just drag something inside of, so I'm going to just drag this tile inside, put some of this stuff together. Now, to make sure all of these are on the same plane, 
basically I can click on these and make sure they're all on the same Y axis here. So I'm going to hit negative 1 here. And on all of these, I'm going to also hit negative 1. So really I can select these here or I can select them all here. And just take this part right here and hit negative 1. Make sure they're all on the same plane. And then I can actually move all of them at the same time. Now these are behind that water, so what I want to do is go ahead and put these on top of the water. And it's because of this z-axis here, so I can go ahead and um, put this ahead. So I'm going to put this as negative 1. And then this one over here, I'm going to hit the R key. I'm just going to expand that just a little. All right, so let's see how this level looks. If I go to my game view, you can see I have this little gap here on purpose, and then I have this little area over here. And I can make some sort of platform or something like that. Now, when I add this, you'll notice how it's. it seems like I'm not really adding anything. But if I push this over, you'll see I'm actually adding something. It's just the fact that it's behind this um, this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this background and I'm going to put it at 1 because everything else is negative 1 towards the camera. So now that when I drag things in, I can make sure that it's always in front of this camera. And I'm just dragging these three in and then I can highlight those. I can make sure they're all at the same level. I can drag them up and then I can just push this one over. We'll go ahead and add our character, then we'll talk a little bit about prefabs on the same video. Um, just look at my game level. This is how my game level looks. However yours looks is fine. Um, we're just making it, we're setting everything up so we can actually add the character here and maybe add some a little bit of animation. So I'll see you guys in the next video.